So far, we've seen default code spaces, creation and usage, but we haven't seen anything that actually tells you the, the, the how powerful code spaces is and um, how you can use it in, in, a, in a situation where you want to have everything ready, everything pre-installed and pre-configured. So I'm going to use again this uh, very um, slim repo that doesn't even have a readme to demonstrate uh, what I'm talking about when uh, adding uh, configuration. So this could uh, you could do this in any repo and I'm going to go ahead and uh, do this with uh, code spaces. I'm going to create a code space on main and start from scratch so that you can see uh, that this is not necessarily something that uh, is specific to my account or specific to any repository. You can do this for any repository uh, and I can definitely do that with uh, code spaces. You can also do the same with VS Code if you have the code spaces extension installed. My code space has uh, loaded here and what you want to do is open up the command palette. So I'm going to open up the command palette and I'm gonna, you're going to start typing code spaces at development container configuration file. The development container configuration file is where all of the code space magic happens. It's where you can configure the editor, configure the environment and do all kinds of different things. So I'm going to click on this one and you, because the command palette is uh, uh, fuzzy, you can type in container configuration files and that will work and that will match as well. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to say select a container configuration definition. What is the definition? It is just a base scaffolding, a base theme for what you want to create. So you can see here that I have several available. There's Python 3, Python 3 and PostgreSQL if I want to use a PostgreSQL database. Uh, Miniconda, like if you don't want to use a virtual environment, you want to use Conda or Miniconda. Uh, Alpine for default simple Alpine container with uh, Git, uh, Ubuntu, like if you prefer that, or Debian. But uh, I'm going to be using uh, Python 3. Uh, and actually you can act, you can you can click here and show all the definitions and uh, look there's even a one for Azure functions and Python 3 which is uh, great if you want to do Azure functions uh, there's all kinds of different things Jupyter data science uh, Py, uh, PyPy which is a, a different Python interpreter I mean this is a very uh, very very good there's lots of uh, things for Azure as well but I want to do something with Python three and again this is also fuzzy uh, using the fuzzy match so you can type in and get something matching so it's, yes I want to do Python 3 applications I'm going to click that and here you get a couple of uh, different options so I can say well um, I want to run um, you know any of these are fine let's let's do three that nine bullseye now you get this a uh, nice uh, message here that says use bullseye variants on local ARM64 Apple Silicon. That means if you're using a Mac M1 with the M1 processor, you'll probably want to use the dash bullseye. The bullseye means that it is a special a container uh, on a special Linux version from the Debian Linux distribution. So uh, useful to know that if you're uh, doing that, that'll, that'll uh, help you out. So I'm going to select, uh, say, the 3.9 bullseye. And then sometimes you, you want to do a little bit of note. So that is uh, something that you can pick and choose here. And I don't want to use any node development. I'm not going to build a web application. So I'm going to click on None. And finally, you have the extra features, extra additional features to install. Uh, you can see here there's AWS CLI, the Azure CLI, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's Docker, .NET. Um, I don't, you, even an SSH server, um, I don't need any of these, but just so that you can see uh, what that would mean, I'm going to click on the Azure CLI. And then I click OK, and let's see what happens. So immediately, all of these uh, new files get loaded, actually two. Uh, we've noticed a change to the dev container configuration. Rebuild the container to apply them now. So uh, you, can, you can see here that uh, this is uh, popping up. And what this means is that if I click Rebuild now, it will take, it will take all of these new things into consideration and it will create a new code space so that you can use that instead. So instead of using the default, 
which was using Ubuntu, then this will use Bullseye and it will come with Python 3.9. Now, I'm not gonna do that right now. Let's take a look at the files. So essentially, uh, one directory uh, called dev container that is going to be hidden with two files, a dev container .json and a Docker file. So those two uh, files are the ones that you're gonna be using for configuring your uh, development configuration. So uh, in short, this is how you would uh, create that scaffolding, that initial scaffolding uh, for your development containers. You don't need to remember all of these and write uh, these uh, big, you know, 60 line JSON by, by, from scratch and remember every single thing. But you can see, for example, that the Azure CLI uh, option was selected. So that's why the Azure CLI is there. So a lot of the things that we selected are there. The variant is Python 3.9. If we take a look at the Docker file, uh, similar things. Uh, the 3.10 bullseye is just a default container. But uh, since we're selecting 3.9 bullseye, this will change. This is just a default and uh, there's nothing to it. Like if we wanted to install some, some Python requirements that would happen right here. So there you go. That's how you create configuration for dev containers for code spaces. When I open, if I add this and I open the, the code space, it will load all of these. You can see, you, can, you, you, you saw that message, that pop-up that said, hey, do you wanna rebuild this once all of these uh, changes are added? And if I change anything, that pop-up will show again. So next we'll see how, how we, can, uh, we, can, we can do some configuration for these, uh, uh, with these, using these files.